Hey guys, welcome back to my channel again. And today, before starting the video, I would like to thank you all for your for all your messages and um, for your response on my comment section. It's been really great hearing comments from some people like uh, I'm doing really good and this video is helping you guys. It's really good to hear it from you that um, these videos are actually helping you. So uh, today's topic is going to be the top reasons that why a Canadian student visa can be rejected. And before we start this topic, I'll just like to thank you all for watching my videos and being connected. And I would like you to subscribe to my channel so because I keep making a lot of videos and every video is related to each other. So if you miss just one, it's probably very hard to catch on to others because every video complements each other and they relate. So the today's topic is um, why the top reasons that why a Canadian student visa can be rejected. Okay, so the first thing is the most common thing I would like to say is uh, about your academic background. See, the thing is, if you're applying to Canada, for example, in a business program, and you have completed your graduation or your 12th grade with uh, science, so there is no study relevancy. Like, these two studies need to bond and connect with each, each other. So it's like, uh, uh, like a lot, not, a lot, not a lot of students go after 12th grade, but most of them go after graduation, which is for PG diploma or three universities. So one of the most important requirement of Canadian government is that your last studies and the studies you're going to pursue in Canada should be related. They should be same. They should connect with each other. So it's like if you're applying from science field to a commerce field, they don't really fit well together or vice versa for you. If you're from commerce background and you're applying for science background. So this can be really important. And uh, if you are a mechanical, uh, if you are a science student in um, back in India and you're applying for a business thing, it can still be relevant because science students can study business. It's not that tough. But if a commerce student tries to go to science, he probably cannot because uh, you need to have that basic background of science for going into the science field. You cannot just study commerce for all your like until your twelfth grade or graduation. You can complete your graduation, but and you can and you can go in science. Uh, that is really difficult. So just make sure that there should be course relevancy. That if you're from commerce background, you go to into some business or arts related field rather than some science related field. And the second uh, most common reason is the lack of financial resources. So, I, as I mentioned in our previous videos about GIC, so GIC is a thing that makes sure for the Canadian government that you can survive in Canada and you have enough money. And when you apply for your visa, you need to show all your financial documents, like if your parents are sponsoring your education, you need to show their bank statements for the last six months and they should have enough money in their bank accounts coming in and out which shows the flow, the cash flow in your account which can satisfy the bank and the Indian government that okay when you're going to Canada you have sufficient amount of money in your bank and you and your parents can support it and if you're going by your So what I'm saying was you need to have a good bank like a bank balance in your like a bank or your account. Uh, you need to have the cash flow to show the government that you have been doing good and you are financially stable to go to Canada and support yourself. And the basic problem is uh, like when people take bank loans, if, if it's about a bank loan, you're pretty secured uh, because the bank is guaranteeing that, she, he, that he is going to pay your money in Canada. But uh, if, when you try to do it with your own finances, when you're not taking any loans, and you not you don't have a lot of a good cash flow in your bank account, it's probably gonna affect your visa chances because the visa officer probably thinks you're not financially stable to stay in Canada. This is one simple reason, and the other simple reason is uh, the lack of documentation. This is really stupid mistake that people make, but it is true and it happens and it happens a lot. There there, are, there have been like when I was. Uh, applying for my visa the advice that i got to apply was like a lot of people forget to do the wrong to do, to do the right documentation because of, we think that it's about a visa so we just over document everything you don't know you do not have to attach a life with literally bundles of your tax re tax returns and your income files all the way down going to two three years you don't have to do that just 
attach what is required of you, the, what the people are asking. There's a whole manual and a sheet which, which shows that what documents you need to apply for your study visa. And just apply that and make sure they are in order and they have there are good copies like when you take Xerox copies, it's like really good and it's visible. They're not very dull copies. These are really simple and basic mistakes. And the other thing that can affect your visa in Canada is uh, the, the firstly the courses and your marks and then your um, financial status. These are the most often and basic reasons. And if you try to find other reasons, there can be a lot of manipulative reasons that why you can't. And there, uh, there can also be a reason of your IELTS because if your IELTS band is if your IELTS score is not meeting the minimum requirement it can downgrade your visa strength your profile strength because if somebody has really good academic score he is financially stable the government has no reason to reject or deny their visa unless the Canadian government stopped accepting a lot of uh, accepting uh, students because if they have a lot of a load of students they stop accepting visas there's a quota for it even though it doesn't exist, we don't know about it, it still does. There's a quota that every year this number of students can be allowed in Canada. So friends, when you're applying for your visa, just to make sure you don't do these three basic mistakes. And there are a lot of various other factors that I'll be discussing in my next video. Because um, when I'm, I was applying for my visa, I really ha had nobody to tell me exactly what I did with these visas. So it's just, uh, if you're going through a consultancy, uh, I just advise you to do what they say because they know their job. And when I say about consultancies, it's about not any random shop on, or consultancy on the street. It's like I did it with IDP, which is really one of the biggest abroad educational consultancies in India. And uh, they really helped me with my visa process and everything. So I'll just advise you to go to such good institutions and where they can help actually help you. So I'm going to be in this video now and I'd like you guys to subscribe and like to my channel. Uh, and I'm really sorry for the break in the video because my battery got exhausted in between. So I'll, I'll so this is the first video for the week and I'll be uploading the next video same like next my Q&A video this week itself. So be sure to stay subscribed and watch my other videos. So I'll see you guys soon.